Your brain is wired differently. You can't change that. You can try as hard as you like, but... You are who you are. Whether or not the people around you are able to accept that is their problem, not yours. Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir Duvid, and today I want to play a game called Sapphire Snow, The Bear, The Beast, and The Blizzard. Please be aware that this tale features themes of mental health and suicide. Okay. It contains the following warnings and triggers. Disturbing language and behavior. Mentions of mental health. Mentions of self-harm. Attempted suicide. Bright lights. Blood. <gasps> Not blood. Death. <gasps> Stay safe and have fun. Chapter 1, Lost In a distant universe not too dissimilar from our own, a young woman walked alone in a world of white. Dragging her feet through the deep snow surrounding her, Safi pulled her coat a little tighter around her neck to shield herself from the icy chill caressing her skin. Confronted by the almost endless expanse of snow, she began to wonder why she was even out there, cold and alone. In her heart, she already knew the answer. She couldn't carry on, she couldn't cope, she couldn't breathe. So she just left. She knew it wouldn't solve anything, but she wasn't about to suffocate in a sea of people who would watch and do nothing. If it sucks, hit the bricks. Or worse, whip out their phones to capture the macabre moment and share it on social media. If she was going to die, she'd rather be someplace like this, Somewhere spacious, somewhere she could simply disappear. Aww. She wasn't sure she ever existed anyway. So what difference would it make if things ended here? At least like this, she knew the numbness was real. She could already feel it creeping into her fingers and toes. It was only a matter of time before it seeped into her very soul. Aww. But Safi had been numb for a long time now. And when she wasn't, it was the opposite. Her emotions exploded from within her like a dormant volcano, bubbling away under the surface until they spewed out of her in waves of burning passion, untamable and all-consuming. This is beautifully written. The more she contemplated her own demise, the more she saw the faces of her loved ones in her mind. Guilt, that was what Safi felt when she thought of them. They cared so much about her, and she loved them just as dearly. The idea of hurting them made her hesitant. If she left them behind, what if she made them feel how she felt now? She didn't want to be responsible for that, but if she was gone, she wouldn't feel anything anymore. She'd finally be free. Mm, that's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. They're all that had ever stopped Safi from doing something stupid, as people put it. Was it stupid, though? To want a way out when you can't see an end to the pain, she didn't think so. Safi. What's the point in keeping someone alive if all they ever get to experience is suffering? Isn't that cool? I got four letters for you, Safi. H-O-P-E. Telling you, I've been there. You gotta keep going, even if it's out of spite. Safi. Why should a person be expected to keep going on the small glimmer of hope that one day, if you hold on just a little longer, things might mystically get better? You just answered your own question. Because they might. We don't live in a world of magic and miracles. We live in a world where being different is practically a death sentence. True, but maybe not magic and miracles. But it is a world of infinite, of finite possibilities. Like, Genichimaru isn't going to come down from the sky and ask for my hand in marriage, but you never know. Safi hadn't always thought that way. There was a time many years ago when she still believed in magic. She saw the world for the wonderful place that it could be, 
and fought back against the encroaching shadows with a childlike enthusiasm, bright and optimistic for her future. But beleaguered by bullies and beaten down over and over again, before long Safi was robbed of her light. Her sense of self became smothered beneath a series of torn and tattered masks she wore to stand a chance at surviving modern society. This is hitting a bit too close to home. <laughs> Everyone acts at one point or another, but Safi never left the stage. She knew others saw the person buried beneath. She wasn't a good enough thespian to hide it from them, though they never chose to engage with that part of her. Eventually, she realized that her true self was something to be ashamed of, something to keep concealed, gradually becoming more distant until she was a stranger even to herself. From afar, Safi seemed functional. However, upon closer examination, the cracks were clear to see, strained and slowly crumbling, much like the battered bear she carried close to her wherever she went. No matter how hard Safi tried to piece herself back together, she'd always end up falling apart again. Which is why she was there, trudging through the blanket of snow. <laughs> Paranoid, Safi paused, patting her coat pocket just to check that her beloved bear was still with her. Mm. She knew it was strange to carry around a stuffed toy at her age, but she didn't care. The bear brought her comfort in times when she had no one else to turn to. <sighs> Safe in the knowledge she hadn't lost him, Safi continued her trek through the winter wilderness. Sapphire, it's my professional opinion that you are indeed on the autistic spectrum. <sighs> the very second she heard the psychologist speak those words, she knew she was doomed. Uh, that's not a doomed thing. You're what we used to refer to as high functioning or having Asperger's, but now we tend to just call it ASD. Safi thought knowing one way or the other, might make her feel empowered, grant her some degree of control that she was sorely lacking in her life, and it did, for a short time. Once her initial relief subsided though, Safi felt the nagging weight of the diagnosis pulling down on her heart. Congratulations, you've been diagnosed with never-ending despair, just what I always wanted. Hmm. She said Safi wasn't broken, that there was nothing wrong with her, the problem was other people. She told Safi the world was changing, albeit not fast enough. That one day with any luck it would be a kinder, more accepting place for neurodivergent people like her. But Safi wasn't sure she could wait much longer. Safi didn't make the trek out into the wilderness intending to die. But she couldn't help dwelling on it. Those kinds of thoughts had become a constant companion, more comforting than unsettling. I think I even want to die. The problem is, I don't exactly want to live either. I know what that feels like. And I know what that's called. Uh, second... Second-hand or secondary suicidal thoughts. It's when you don't want to die, but you don't exactly want to live either. If I end up back where I left off, Things will carry on until I'm withered and old. Stuck. Hollow and alone. Like a ghost haunting its own home. But it might not. It might not. It could get better. Or worse, I could be carted into care against my will. Left a rot in some ghastly place people put you in so they can shield the rest of society from the inconvenience of your existence. I want to give Safi the biggest hug ever. I am not a licensed psychiatrist, but I wish I was. Who the heck would want that? Yeah, we don't want to go to grippy sock jail. Safi would rather take her chances out in the elements. At least like this, she was closer to nature instead of isolated indoors. That is still a good healthy thing to do, to just drop everything and go for a walk to literally touch grass. That, when you don't know what to do, if it's safe for you to do, that's probably the healthiest thing you can do for your mental health at the end of the day. I guess, for now, I'll just keep walking and see where I end up. Now, I know that's not what she meant, 
but I think that's a good way to look at it. Just keep walking, and see where you end up. Just keep walking. Whether or not she would make it back home, she elected to leave up to fate. Mm -mm. And fate found Safi sooner than she could possibly have imagined. Chapter 2. Found. Ooh. Neat. This is neat. Growing weary of walking, Safi decided to stop for a moment, taking in the pristine white glow all around her before sinking to the ground with a strained sigh. Her winter coat did little to protect her from the biting cold beneath, but she lay still regardless, staring up at the blurry sky as snowflakes danced and drifted above her, falling softly onto her face. Exhausted, Safi contemplated simply staying there. Closing her eyes, she began to sink slowly to sleep when her rest was suddenly interrupted by a rustling sound nearby. Mm, um, excuse me, you can't sleep there. You'll freeze! Who said that? Are Leaping you a deer? Leaping to her feet, startled, Safi squinted, scanning the snowscape for any sign of the voice's owner. Who's there? She called out, wondering if she had merely imagined the sound. Mm -mm. In her voice, is that you again? <clears throat> Down here? Oh, it's precious! Casting her eyes towards the ground, Safi gasped aloud at the creature stood proudly before her. Are you a Pokemon? Can I capture you? Yeah, are, are you a little dragon? This is gonna sound kind of crazy, but... Are you a dragon? I know you're not supposed to exist, but with the horns and the wings, you sort of look like one. Well, a short one anyway. Oh. I'll have you know, I'm actually pretty tall for my kind. <sighs> That's not a bad guess, though. You're a Pokemon. I knew it. Or better yet, no, no. You actually speak. You're a Digimon. <laughs> Unfortunately, dragons don't exist. Or at least, not anymore. Your kind hunted them to extinction eons ago. Oh, Us thanks, you, Mandy. however, have thankfully proved more elusive. Oh, an elemental? So then you're like a snow spirit? It's so cute. Bingo! Well, a blizzard, if we're being specific. Oh. But enough with the introductions. Your body temperature is dangerously low, my friend. I don't know who you are or why you're out here, but we need to get you warm and fast. Follow me. Oh. Before Safi even had a chance to respond, the creature bounded off into the blanket of white. Mm -hmm. Wait! Oh, come on, Slowpoke. Get those legs moving. The faster you run, the faster we can get you out of danger. This is my domain, and I won't have you pointlessly passing away in the ice. Understood? <laughs> Aww. But my feet are practically frozen. I can't even feel where I'm treading. Can't you slow down just a tiny bit? Ah, oh, fine. But if you pass out, just know I won't stop hugging you until you wake up. Aww. That, th that does sound nice. Aww. Aww. But that sounds adorable. You know, I think I might be feeling a little faint. <laughs> Don't you dare! I was only kidding! <laughs> hey, you promised hugs. You look so cute and cuddly. Oh, I just want to evolve you into a gigantic mechanic monster and fight Devimon. Yeah, well, if you succumb to the cold, I won't be able to bring you back. If I did hug you, it'd just end you even faster. Oh, Why? Do you have like a death grip or something? I can't exactly imagine you crushing me to death. Mm -hmm. Come here a second. I'll show you. Doing as commanded, Safi approached the elemental who held out its hand for her to grasp. Is he actually cold? 
Now take off your glove and shake my hand. <laughs> Holy hell, you're freezing. Aww. Sophie <laughs> recoiled in horror the moment her skin made contact with the creature. <laughs> exactly. I can only control the element of ice. A hug from me would be fatal in your current condition. Still want one? Huh? Yes. Actually, no. No, 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 no. Maybe? <laughs> oh, you're hopeless. <laughs> so, where is it you're taking me, exactly? There's nothing out here but more snow. Uh-huh. That's because you don't know where to look. Well, just as long as it's not the way out. I'm not ready to go home yet. Good! Because you're in far too deep to turn back now. You never make it back before the cold claims you. Mm -mm. But why do you even care about me at all? I got myself into this mess. It shouldn't be your problem to deal with. Well, I think if you died here, it would be his problem. Oh, but it is my problem. Very much so. Uh, think of me as a kind of warden. Oh, he's so cute, though. Like the type you get patrolling nature reserves and stuff? Precisely. It's my duty to watch over this place. Imagine how awful it would be if I just let you die on my turf. Oh, no. No, 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 no. You're here, and I'm happy to help. So that's that. Oh, see? that That's why you gotta keep walking. You might run into an adorable dragon Digimon who really cares about you not dying on his turf. Okay. Safi wanted to ask the creature more, but her voice seized in her throat. She sensed something from the spirit, but was too anxious to question it further. We're not too far now. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other, and everything will be fine, my friend. Come on. As promised, it wasn't long before the pair reached a thick and flourishing tree line that was somehow obscured from Safi's sight by the snow. With each shivering step into the forest, Safi noticed the light changing around her. What is this place? Somewhere very, very special. Now don't twaddle. We've got to get you some shelter. Hmm. So pretty. Coming to a stop at the base of an obscenely tall but beautiful tree, the creature gestured towards the trunk. Well, uh, this is it. We're here. Hmm. Right, but where is here? Oh, look, it doesn't matter, okay? What's important is that if you head inside, you should be safe. Oh, Inside the tree? Inside the tree. Get in. Mm-hmm. It's not much, but it should suffice as suitable shelter. There might even be some firewood left over inside, if you want to make it extra cozy. Mm. Just give me a shout when you've warmed up, and feel ready to return home, and I'll lead you back. Wait, so you're not coming with me? Oh, no, 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 no can do, I'm afraid. You weren't even supposed to see me. <laughs> I only showed myself because I noticed you were in danger. If someone happened to find us together, we'd both be in big trouble. Oh. But... Nope, no buts. I need you to listen to me. This is my domain, and you'll do as I say. Oh, all right. The sternness in the spirit's voice sent shivers straight up Safi's spine, causing her to fall promptly silent. There's a good little human. Now, you've lost a lot of strength, so you need to eat. You head inside and start warming up while I forage you up some food. Mm. Nodding slowly, Safi started to grow concerned. Should she really be taking orders from this strange spirit? <laughs> Great, then we have a plan. Please, stay safe while I'm gone. And don't go wandering around in the woods. Oh, all right. Only because you're an adorable Digimon. There's a foul blight taking hold of this land. I can't protect you if you don't stay hidden. So just sit tight and wait for my return. 
The steeliness of the spirit's stare forced Safi to nod in compliance once more, and it smiled in acknowledgement before ushering her inside. Are you sure you can't just stay here with me? Hmm. Anxiety rose to the surface as Safi stuttered. Oh. <sighs> as much as I'm enjoying your company, I'm not supposed to be here. Like I said, it would be bad if I were caught here with you. Just because I watch over this land doesn't mean I can control everything in it. What's important is that you should be safe here. Unable to speak for fear of allowing tears to escape, mm. Safi stood still, pleading with her eyes for the creature not to leave her. I'm sorry, but it's vital that you eat. Rest will help, but you'll never make it home on an empty stomach. Besides, you're my guest. I can hardly allow you to starve. I'll try not to be gone for too long, okay? Just get in the tree, lady. Just like that, the creature bowed its head politely before fading into the fog. My little buddy. Ooh. The very second the spirit was out of sight, Safi felt a suffocating sense of dread creep closer. Its arrival had been a timely diversion from her ruinous rumination, but now that it was gone, she felt lost once more. And even worse, lonely. Oh, that's the void creeping up on you. Can't let it Safi win. Safi didn't even mind if she slipped away. So why was the spirit so intent on having her survive? And why did it seem apprehensive? No, afraid of lingering here. Whose home is this? What's the blight that the spirit spoke so briefly of? How was any of this happening? Perhaps it was already too late for her. It was all over the moment she fell asleep in the snow. Everything after that had merely been a hallucination. In a desperate attempt to distract herself from dwelling on her demons, Safi began to explore the small but humble dwelling she found herself in. Cool. Scattered objects lay covered in dust, once loved by someone, now discarded and forgotten while others were arranged neatly on shelves, displayed with pride. Safi couldn't help but compare the room to the wider world outside. People like her were left to decay too ugly and inconvenient to consider saving when surrounded by so many beautiful and superior beings. She wondered if the abandoned trinkets felt as betrayed as she did. A self-deprecating smirk spread across her lips as she realized how deep her depression ran, infecting every inch of her, eating her up from the inside. Even now, in this fantastical scenario that bore a striking resemblance to some of her youthful dreams, she couldn't find it in herself to hope, anxiety gnawing at her very soul. Overwhelmed and uncertain, Safi crawled onto the ledge resembling a bed and curled up into a tight ball, shielding her eyes from her surroundings. If she could just sleep, maybe the spirit would be back by the time she woke up. Oh. Chapter 3. Goodbye. Ah. But morning came and there was still no sign of the creature. Mm, where's my Digimon? Taffy stretched, stifling a yawn as she peered outside the small window. It was still snowing. She began to wonder what was real. Had she truly run into a creature out there in the blinding expanse, or was she simply waiting for a figment of her imagination to return and rescue her from herself? Hey, sometimes your imagination can do that. If the spirit didn't even exist, then surely there was no point in staying. Uh, wait a little longer. Just kind of chill, chill Despite out Despite the here. doubt in her mind, Safi decided to stay. Ooh. Without the strength left to explore, she simply sat waiting for a spirit that never appeared. Aww. Safi's mouth was dry, her lips cracked, and as her stomach growled in hunger, her eyes settled on a length of rope tucked away in one corner of the room. That the rope second she saw be... it, Safi stood without hesitation, reaching for the rope with both hands. Safi? We don't do that here, Safi. The creature wasn't coming back, she thought. Just like everything else in her life, it had abandoned her. 
Safi refused to face more pain. She wasn't going to die of thirst or starvation. She'd never had control over much, but Safi was at least determined to define her death. As she caressed the rope lovingly, feeling the rough texture on the palms of her hands, Safi! It occurred to her that whenever she'd previously considered ending her life, she never knew what to write in a note for those she'd leave behind. A grim smile crept across her face when she realized there was simply nothing left to say. Almost in a daze, Safi found the perfect spot to secure the rope to the ceiling, and stepping back, she took in her handiwork, hoping she'd managed to tie it tight enough. I don't know, those rafters don't look really, don't look really sturdy. Carefully moving a small stool to sit beneath the dangling rope, she climbed atop it, gently draping the noose around her neck before fastening it firmly. Do you even know how to tie a noose? This was it. No more hurt, no more responsibility, no more anything. Still not a good Safi solution. Safi would finally be free. Not really. Maybe in another life, for another me, things might work out differently. But I guess that's just being selfish. Not at all. Safi, I just met you. Goodbye, world. No! I'm sorry I wasn't strong enough to spend more time with you. But Safi didn't truly believe she would get another shot. She just wanted to say something to stifle the silence before her inevitable suffocation. With one foot hovering above the floor, Safi shut her eyes and stepped towards oblivion. Safi! Uh-uh, no way. Not in my house you don't. I'm not about to let you turn your life into a horror story. Mm -mm. Save our Safi, Without we don't warning, do that here. Safi's body suddenly hit the ground. <coughs> oh, thank goodness. Gasping for breath, Safi stared up through blurred vision at the one who snatched suicide away from her. I'm sorry, but it's not your time. You don't get to decide when you die, friend. That's entirely up to me. Oh. What, what are you talking about? Well, this is my home, so we play by my rules. And rule number one is no self-slaughtering in the damn living room, okay? Or, or anywhere, really. <sighs> but since you clearly can't be trusted not to break that, it looks like I'm going to have to take care of you. Mm -mm. Whatever was going on, Safi struggled to rationalize it. She wondered if she'd even managed to mess up her own suicide. Her best guess was that she had succeeded, and this must be the fabled Grim Reaper come to take her away. <coughs> oh, I get it now. You're just a hallucination, right? I already died, didn't I? No, he's just the next level of Digimon. Safi's savior scratched its head, bewildered by her dismissive attitude. Oh boy, what am I going to do with you? I am kind of peckish, actually. Which is weird, because I always imagined ghosts had no appetite. I don't know, ghosts seem pretty hungry. Rubbing <sighs> her eyes, Safi's stomach growled once more, causing the entity to sigh in exasperation. <laughs> oh, right, that's it. I'm sending you to sleep. We can talk more when you wake up. Mm-mm. <laughs> And with a swift click of its fingers, the mysterious stranger sent Safi straight into a deep and dreamless slumber. Mm -mm. Chapter 4. Imprisoned. <laughs> Coming to on a cold stone floor covered in blankets, Safi sat up slowly in the dark of the night. I feel like these titles should have the Always Sunny in Philadelphia ah, song good. over it. You're awake. Well, this is lovely. Safi's gaze was immediately drawn to the figure sitting on the other side of her cell. She couldn't quite tell if its tone was one of cheer or relief. Perhaps a mixture of both. I don't know, he's got yellow eyes. He's kind of cute, though. 
I can only apologize if you weren't warm enough. I tried my best to make you as comfortable as possible, which, uh, believe me, isn't exactly, uh, easy in a place like this. Oh, and I, uh, took the liberty of drying your clothes. They oh, were yeah. soaking wet. But I didn't have anything spare for you to wear, so blankets had to suffice. So don't worry. <laughs> I didn't try and sneak a peek or whatever. Instead of addressing her speaker, Safi glanced around her surroundings in a state of panic upon realizing her coat was missing, <gasps> along with the stuffed toy she always kept close. Not my bear! Where's, where's Snow? What have you done with him? Upset at the absence of her most precious companion, the raggedy old bear she dragged everywhere with her, Safi stared down the stranger with accusing eyes. What? This bad old bear? Don't touch the bear! Safi's jailer held out her beloved bear for her to see. He's right here with me. Don't worry. I'll take good care of him for you. Mm -mm. The stranger's smile did nothing to reassure Safi, who leapt to her feet to face him. No! Give him back! <sighs> <sighs> I'm afraid I can't do that. Not until I know. You won't use it to hurt yourself. You're a monster! Give the lady back her bear! <laughs> Trust me, I've been called worse. Uh, seriously though, I'm sorry for stealing him away from you. But I swear, it's for your own safety. Gripping onto the bars, Safi growled through gritted teeth as though somehow her anger would grant her the strength to break free and take back her bear. Hey, see? I knew you still had fire inside you. So answer me this. Where was that when you tried to hang yourself? Huh? Uh, well, I mean, he kinda does have a point. If nothing else, live on for your bear. But stay silent. Refusing to rise to the question, Safi chose to stay silent, turning away from the entity in disgust. Mm. <sighs> you can ignore me all you want, but you're not going anywhere until I get it out of you. I'll keep you here for eternity, if that's what it takes. Mm -mm. Who are you? The first thought in Safi's mind spilled softly from her lips. It's a little rude to ask a question without answering mine first, don't you think? <laughs> but if it'll help you see me as the ally I am, rather than the enemy you assume me to be, then I suppose there's no harm in indulging you. Mm -hmm. You're an evolved Digimon, aren't you? I have many names, some more pleasing than others. Since my sole intention right now is keeping you safe. Why don't we stick to the one I share with your, uh, fluffy little friend here? The entity shook Safi's stuffed bear before laying it to rest gently on his lap. You want me to call you Snow? <laughs> Fitting, don't you think? Do you have a problem addressing me as such? Well, no, it's just strange. Then I'd argue that it suits me Perfectly. <laughs> Puzzled by Snow's behavior, Safi sighed softly to herself. She didn't know what to make of him. He had her behind bars, and yet it appeared as though he had no immediate plans to harm her. Still, she couldn't shake the feeling that the stranger had something sinister in store for her. Mm. Yeah, why am I in here? Why have you brought me here? Is that really what you want to ask? Or are you hoping to find out why I rescued you? Both. <laughs> because you're precious. It's as simple as that. Yeah, where are we? Are we still on that tree? Where are we exactly? Snow took a moment before answering, as though he was considering how much to reveal to Safi. Somewhere safe. That's not an answer. Mm. I'm afraid it's all you're gonna get. What's important is that no one will find us here. 
Which means we should be able to spend our time together. In peace. <sighs> Who do we have to worry about finding us? Yeah, can, can I leave? Can I leave? <sighs> I don't know. Can you? <laughs> hey. Can you quit being so cryptic? You're the one who kidnapped me and put me behind bars. Technically, yes. But, uh, in a roundabout way... You kind of did it to yourself. What's that supposed to mean? I think you already know the answer to that. Silly. <laughs> what, what did she just tell you about being cryptic? Shooting snow yet another scowl, Safi slumped to the cold ground, exasperated. <laughs> Is it so bad being stuck with me? Uh... Yes, no, stay silent. Uh... <sighs> Let's stay silent. I don't really, I don't really know if either of those answers are what we're both feeling right now. <sighs> Giving me the silent treatment won't make any difference. However you might feel, I'm not going anywhere. Please, eat something. It's unlikely to be the most delicious of snacks you've ever had, but uh, I tried my best to make it edible, at least. Aww. Gesturing to the plate beside Safi, Snow pulled a feigned smile. Yeah, you've, you gotta eat. Thanks. Gotta eat your foods. Without saying another word, Safi tucked into the food Snow had prepared for her. It wasn't much to look at, but somehow the taste was both salty and sweet. Mm. She didn't want to admit it, but it was one of the best things she'd eaten in forever. <laughs> Attempting to hide her face from snow as she hungrily scoffed the rest of the snacks, Safi retreated into the darkest corner of her cage like an animal starved. Uh -oh. <coughs> so slow down. I wouldn't want you to choke. Something I just learned that uh, if you're choking, you won't be coughing. Choking is silent, apparently. So you gotta watch out for that. Covered in crumbs, Safi wiped her mouth and leaned back against the wall a sudden sleepiness starting to take hold of her. That's it. You just rest now. I'll watch over you. Mm. Chapter 5. Interrogation. Mm. Wakey, wakey. Rise and shine, little Sapphire. You can't sleep all day. We have work to do. Mm. Huh? Awakening with a startle, Sapphire sat up straight to find herself face to face with her captor. His ashen skin pressed against the bars of her cage. Ah, jump scare. Ah, he's cute. Something compelled her to reach out, but just before her fingers could graze his cheek, Snow retreated to the shadows of the dungeon. Mm. It was only then that an alarming thought occurred to Safi. Did you drug my food? <laughs> Well, now that's no way to greet the one taking care of you, is it? A simple good morning would have been nice. <laughs> Did you? Safi refused to back down, asking more sternly a second time. Ah, <sighs> does it really matter? You slept through the night without so much as a peep. So just be thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Could you just put me to sleep with the snap of your fingers? Was that really necessary? So then you're admitting you drugged me. You're the one accusing me. I'm not admitting anything. All I did was help. That's all I want. You keep saying that, but how am I ever supposed to believe you when you've got me behind bars? Yeah, dude. I just want to keep you safe. Can't you see? You're not protecting me. You're imprisoning me. Keeping me locked away isn't gonna make my life any better. I told you. I'm not letting you out of there until you tell me why you tried to kill yourself. I don't know why. God, don't lie to me! A burst of freezing cold air spread throughout the room in an instant, leaving behind a heavy fog. Safi shivered, and as the fog dissipated, she gasped at Snow in surprise upon seeing the horns now adorning his head. I'm... 
I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shout at you, it's just... <sighs> well, you're infuriating. Why won't you just admit how you feel, and tell me why you did it? Because I honestly don't know. It's very hard to describe your feelings when you're in that state of mind. It may take, like, months, weeks, or years to understand what you were going through. Yes, you do. First I find you freezing to death in the snow, then you come into my home and try to hang yourself. You must have a reason. As Safi studied her captor intensely, the pieces began to fall into place. Wait, so then that creature? That was you? Yeah, okay. I'm going to need you t to calm down. Was he the Digimon? Then that means... That means you brought me here on purpose. Well, yeah, but, but it's not like I had anything nefarious in mind. <laughs> I just didn't want to watch you die out there in the cold, when I knew there was a, uh, a perfectly cozy hideaway nearby, it is all. <laughs> but still, you deceived me. You did Why didn't you just say it was your home, huh? I should have known with your devil horns and all. The devil oh. horns? N now hang on a second. Are you some sort of sick pervert who gets off on preying on vulnerable people? Because <laughs> if so, you might as well go ahead and kill me. But please, you don't understand. I came out here to die anyway. Is that what you want to hear? So, by all means, let's skip to that part and get it over with. Hmm. What? I'm not gonna kill you. I saved you, remember? Twice now, actually. Hmm. Yeah, well, maybe I don't want to be saved. <sighs> Which brings me back to my original point. Why did you want to die? Why do you want me to live so badly? My life is none of your business. See, now that's where you're wrong, Safi. How do you know my name? I never told you. Oh, I'm sorry, I should have asked. Do you prefer Sapphire instead? <laughs> no, Safi's fine. But that's not what I asked you. Oh, why do you insist on asking so many questions? I'm new to this, okay? You both are being- are dodging questions. Quit it, the two of you. I've been out here a long time, but you're the first one I've come across who actually needs my help. So please, for both our sakes, just let me help you. Fine. I can't see how anything you do will make a difference, but I believe you. Thank you, Safi. You have no idea how much that means to me. However it may seem, I really do care about you. Mm. You got a strange way of showing it. <laughs> you put me in a cage, huh? <laughs> I know I'm not very good at this, but uh, I'm trying my best. I knew it wouldn't be easy, but I also never imagined I'd meet someone so difficult. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Snow slowly crept closer to the bars, before clinging onto them tightly as though in pain. Oh, it's you! You just... I don't even have the words! I always thought, when I finally had the opportunity to rescue someone, they'd be grateful. I know I would have been. But with you, it's like you're so screaming at me. For the first time in forever, I feel as though I actually want something. Oh, you're so stubborn. It shouldn't be this hard to save someone. Mm -hmm. Sorry, babe. Oh, shush. J just... Just stop. I shouldn't even be speaking to you like this. I... I'm not supposed to get so involved. Snow. Oh, I said... Shut up! Please. Just be silent. And sleep. When you put it like that. Wait. With a swift click of his fingers, Snow sent Safi spiraling straight back to sleep. <sighs> I meant to be the one saving you, not the other way round. How can I possibly heal you if I never want to let you go? 
Hmm? What does this mean? Hmm. This time, when Safi came to, her prison was bathed in the warming glow of afternoon sun. Had the snow finally stopped? Safi had no way of knowing. She turned to see her captor keeping his ever-constant vigil over her. Your horns. They're gone. Hmm. Unlike before, instead of answering, Snow gazed past her, a <laughs> vacant expression on his face. Oh, you're not talking now. I thought I'd look less frightening like this. I like them. They were cute. Ah. Chapter 5, Branch A, Thaw. Oh. Oh. I actually thought they were pretty cool. They suit you. You shouldn't hide what you are. <laughs> Says the one who ran away for that very reason. <laughs> You're a real hypocrite, Safi. You know that? Yeah. She wasn't sure how to respond, so she shrugged instead, wearing a self-deprecating smile. People didn't usually point out social faux pas so flippantly. <laughs> I don't think he spends much time in social. D do you really mean it? You don't hate my horns? They were cute. Rubbing the spot on his head where the appendages had been, Snow blushed a little, and Safi's smile transformed into something far more sincere as she nodded. Hmm. Ah, you're so cruel, little Sapphire. Snow knew he shouldn't say another word, but he couldn't help himself. <laughs> Why? It was supposed to be a compliment. I took your choice away from you. I don't deserve your kindness. Cool. As if by magic, Snow's horns reappeared as he slinked closer to Safi, slinging his coat to one side before sitting down on the stone floor in front of her instead of skulking in the shadows. That's it cool was then look. that Safi noticed the bandages wrapped around his arm. Are you injured? Oh, th these? No, at least not now. I wear them to cover up my old scars. Snow. It's just easier if I don't have to look at them. You know, they remind me of who I was a long, long time ago. But that part of me's gone now. For better, or for worse. <laughs> Safi wanted to ask him about who he used to be, but she didn't want to seem rude. Several minutes passed in awkward silence. Snow could sense her curiosity, and despite his cautious nature, decided to indulge her. You know, I wasn't always like this. I was like you once. I came here to hide just as you did, but the world wouldn't let me go. I felt as though I had nothing left to live for. I just wanted it all to end somewhere peaceful. Somewhere I could see the sky, and feel the snow on my skin. I'd always loved winter here. There's something special about the way the snowflakes fall so silently. The crisp crunch beneath your feet as you wander into the white. Freshly fallen snow is like starting a painting, a blank canvas full of possibilities. Every step you take, every imprint you leave, you know it won't last forever, but in the moment, it makes you feel like you actually exist. It's proof that you're alive, even if you've lost the ability to feel it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You just kind of... Life is about moments where you feel happy, because you're not going to feel happy every single time of the day. But those little moments where you are happy, that's worth living for. That's worth going through all the poop for. At least, I think so. I was so... So numb, but seeing the snow still made me smile. <laughs> <laughs>
It's funny how feeling so hollow can hurt most of all. I would have given anything to feel something other than empty. So I took out my knife and used it to slit my wrists while the smile was still on my face. It's not like I hadn't done it a million times before. Whenever my emotions were too much to contain, or when they'd abandoned me entirely, I didn't know what else to do. So I cut myself. As stupid as it may sound, it brought me some relief. But then I imagine you already know that. I don't know why, but part of me thought if I could smile up at the sky, maybe it wouldn't hurt quite so much. And that's when I met the Great Blizzard. Enraptured, Safi inched closer to the bars, both horrified by Snow's words, but eager to hear him reveal more. She stopped me from slipping away by freezing all the blood in my body, but it wasn't enough to save me. So she even took my heart, turned it to ice. Now I'm cursed to feel the cold forever. That's insane. It sounds like something straight out of a fairy tale. Well, a pretty grim one, but still. Fairy tales are grim. <laughs> I know, right? But it's true. I have these horns because of her. She said suicide wasn't the answer that she'd made it her mission to save souls like mine, because without us, the world would never change. If all of us lose hope and disappear, then there'll be no one left to fight the Blight. Ooh. Humans almost hunted creatures like her to extinction, the same way they tried to push people like you out of society. <sighs> We're an inconvenience to them. They don't care about myth and magic. They only want industry and innovation. Imagination is the enemy of that. It can't be bought or manufactured. It lives in souls like your Safi. But being born with that sort of spark comes with a price. She said she'd make me strong by stifling my feelings so I could help her in her fight against the Blight. But, uh, perhaps that's a tale for another time. Shrugging off his story, Snow stood once again, leaving Safi more than a little astounded. Hang on! You can't start talking about mighty blizzards and battling blights and then just leave it at that. Yeah, we need some more lore! Oh, but I can, little Sapphire. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, it's much better if I stop before the bloodier parts. Besides, I've already told you far more than I should. Saving lost souls might sound like noble work, but the Blight is bigger than you could possibly imagine. The Blizzard is still out there somewhere, but she's not as strong as she used to be. She thinks we can still help by staying here and saving who we can, while keeping the Blight at bay. <sighs> she sounds incredible. She's doing a lot, a lot of work. Of responsibility. This blizzard sounds like a great being. Snow hesitated before opening his mouth to respond, as though carefully considering his next words. <sighs> she certainly is. I owe her everything. But that doesn't mean I have to agree with her approach. Mm -mm. Sure, she taught me how to fight, how to help, but it's not enough. You're the first person I've encountered in eons who came here to kill themselves instead of me. I'm sick of being hunted for who I am. Before I met her, people saw me as a freak. She made sure that's all I'll ever be. She thinks she can just fix us by freezing our hearts, but she's got it all backwards. It's the world that's broken, not us. So... Stealing my feelings was wrong. Blocking out pain doesn't make things better. It just hurts even more when you finally start to feel again. Mm. That kind of sounds a little like antidepressants or 
or the medications one might take. Snow, I'm so sorry. For everything that's happened to you. I know that doesn't really mean much, but... <sighs> I don't want your pity any more than you want mine. Suddenly slamming his head into the bars, Snow's face contorted with a desperate rage, but Safi stood her ground. Don't you dare fucking look at me like that! Mm. Still, Safi stared at him, sorrow in her eyes. She wasn't especially scared. In fact, she wasn't entirely sure how she felt, but it hurt. I said, stop it! You're gonna get this pity look. A blast of cool air froze the hairs standing to attention on Safi's skin. Slapping him seems more appropriate. However, I am Espoir de Vide, and around here, we give kisses. She wasn't sure what possessed her to act, but an overwhelming urge filled Safi from head to toe, and she grabbed onto Snow's face, kissing him passionately through the bars of her cage. I believe in the power of love, darn it. At first, Snow refused to reciprocate, eyes wide in a mixture of shock and fear, but the longer Safi held him there, the more Snow realized how much he wanted to kiss her back. Mm. Despite the constant chill in the air, Safi still exuded a warmth that Snow had sorely missed. Oh yeah, yeah, he probably hasn't felt anything warm. He longed so desperately for his frozen heart to thaw that he feared he would lose himself in Safi's kindling embrace. When the pair of them eventually separated, Snow glared at Safi, a grave expression on his face. If you think I'll let you go, after one little kiss, you're sorely mistaken, Sapphire. I wasn't, it wasn't for you to let me go. It was for you to stop beating yourself up. It was for you to feel some warmth. I get it, Snow. You're lonely, and that's okay. You have me now. I'll stay here with you if it helps. You don't get anything. You have no idea what I've endured. Besides, you shouldn't say things you don't mean. It could get you into trouble. Mm. You don't owe me kindness, and you're not leaving until you give me an answer to my original question. So why don't you think about that for a while? I have important work to do. Mm. Wait, what if I told you I love you? Would that change anything? I mean, it's pretty cute, but we have just met. But I do feel a deep kindred to you. <sighs> How could you possibly love me when you can't even love yourself, Safi? Instead of sending her to sleep like usual, Snow simply left. Hmm. <laughs> Unsure what else to do, Safi slumped to the ground, resting her head on her knees. She started to wonder if she would ever escape from the prison Snow had put her in. Chapter 6, Branch A, Confrontation. Mm -hmm. How long have I been here? Days passed, followed by weeks, then months, and in all that time, Snow and Safi never spoke. In months? Snow would bring Safi food while she slept, and she would eat forcing herself to stay awake for as long as she could in the hope of seeing him again. Mm. But he always waited for her to drift off before approaching, avoiding her purposefully. Oh, is it because I give you a kissy? Snow hadn't meant to keep her captive for such an extended period. He didn't know what else to do. You may as well just give me grippy socks while I'm here. Being in her presence was painful. It reminded him of how he used to be. He knew deep down he had feelings for her, and so he refused to let her go. How could he? Without Safi, he'd go back to the bleak existence of battling the Blight alone. He came to this place hoping to be free, and instead wound up trapped here. Mm -hmm. Even if they no longer exchanged words, when he returned, wounded and weary, he could at least gaze upon her sleeping form and feel something other than excruciating numbness. But her seemingly endless incarceration was not without aim. Snow had been working diligently with Safi, oblivious to his plan. 
Almost every spare second he had went into sewing her bear back together, mm. as though fixing it would somehow repair Safi's broken soul, and perhaps even his own. Snow knew this was nothing more than a fantasy, but he still believed the bear was the key to freeing them both, and even if he was wrong, he was determined to force that fate upon her for his own sanity. It was a frosty midwinter morning when Snow finally decided to show himself to Safi for the first time in forever. You're here. Safi gasped in surprise at the sight of him, questioning the validity of her vision. So, have you had enough time to think of an answer? Dispensing with pleasantries, Snow questioned her. Standing to face him with a serious expression, Safi gripped her hoodie tightly, filled with resolve. Mm -hmm. I have. And? I didn't want to die at all. I just... I just wanted to connect. Being shunned over and over again just for being myself hurt so much that I felt like I had to hide. I wanted to be free, to express myself without worrying where the next batch of abuse was going to come from. To reach out and truly be understood. I was sick of living my life in a cage created from fear. So I tried to find another way out. At first, I believed you when you said you were trying to protect me. But now, I'm not so sure. Keeping me locked away isn't going to make my life any better. I already retreated from the world when it rejected me, just as you did. And where has that gotten either of us? We're both miserable and alone. Hmm. But we don't have to be. We can help each other. I've come to set us both free. Hmm? There was a glint of something impish in Snow's eyes that unsettled Safi. Hmm? What do you mean? I can't keep doing this. And you can't survive out there on your own. So I figured out a way to end our suffering. Revealing a knife from behind his back, Snow smiled softly at Safi, sending shivers down her spine. Mm? Dude. What you gonna do with that knife, brah? Now... It seems that you're going to use that knife for nefarious purposes. But I don't think you are. I think this is a clever ruse. But I'm going to resist because you want me to think that you're going to do something nefarious with that knife. And so you want me to resist because you think that's what I think. And so I think that I'm going to go along. I'm going to resist. I don't want any more of your help. You don't mean that. Listen, you gave me a second chance at life and uh, I'm grateful for that. I really am, but please, let me at least try and make the most of it. Trust me. Maybe explain what the knife is for first. Trust is earned. You put me here and then left, just like the blizzard left you. She Can't has a you point. Can't you see you're just repeating the same cycle all over again? Mm-hmm. I'm nothing like her. I'm doing this because I genuinely care about you, Safi. And I promise you, I will never, ever leave you alone again. If that's true, you'd give me back my bear and let me out of here. Yeah, she's gone months without her bear. Okay. If that's what you really want, then your wish is my command. Producing her bear almost from thin air, Snow approached Safi's prison with purpose. Just know that I'm not taking my eyes off you for a second. Mm -mm. When Snow strode forward, bursting through the cage's door, Safi realized it was open all along. <gasps> mm? What? She could have run away any time, but she was so used to accepting she was stuck that it hadn't even occurred to her to try the handle. Is that a message? Is that a thinly veiled message? Without so much as wincing, Snow sliced open his hand with the knife, hey. before carefully smearing a small amount of his blood into the eyes of her bear. Oh, are you enchanting my bear? 
we go together, wherever we are, and whatever the world has in store for us, I'll be right here, by your side. Aww. Wearing I a think? slightly abashed look on his face, Snow thrust the stuffed toy into Safi's chest. Aww. Stunned, Safi struggled to speak as she stared in disbelief at her bear, then up at Snow. What? Did you think I was gonna stab you or something? Yes! Or maybe slash both our throats in some kind of gory double suicides? Yes. <laughs> See, that's... That's what I thought that you thought. That you thought that I thought that you thought that you were gonna do that. But I knew that that's what you thought, and so I... I've already lost it. I don't know. <laughs> you came at me with a knife! What was I supposed to think? <laughs> well, I'm sorry if I scared you. I guess I should have uh, dialed down the dramatics a touch. Huh? You think? Gosh darn Digimon. <sighs> oh, come on. Don't pull that face. I already warned you once. Mm. Are you honestly going to make me repeat myself? Warn me about what? <sighs> I said it before, and I'll say it again. I'm not gonna let your life become a horror story, Safi. I still mean that. Hmm. <sighs> then maybe you should try being more straightforward instead of expecting me to decipher all your cryptic clues. Uh-huh. Fair enough. I infused your bear with my blood so I can watch over you. Aww. <laughs> Her face is like, wait, what? What did you do that for? Look, I know you said you don't want my help, but if you're going back home, I'll only worry about you. Mm -hmm. I won't allow you to fall prey to the same debilitating despair that cost me my mortal life. So please, let me protect you, as well as this place. I, I promise, I won't peek at you without your permission. If you're ever in need of my power, just ask, and it will allow me to act through snow here as an avatar. Aww. The sincerity in Snow's smile was enough for Safi to know his words were without sinister intentions, and so she took back her bear. I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything, Safi. I just want you to be safe. Unable to find the right words to convey how she felt, Safi simply threw her arms around Snow, hugging him tightly. I couldn't bring myself to say goodbye, and snow didn't stop me as we separated. Our parting was wordless, so I suppose he felt the same. Well, that's alright, he can see you whenever he wants to through your bear. Somehow, I knew how to navigate the snow-covered woods, where before I would get lost in any unfamiliar surroundings. Mm. And so, I made my way home, holding my bear tightly every step of the way. It wasn't foolish. I knew it would take immense bravery to attempt to start over after everything that had happened. But when I sat down on my bed with my bear by my side, I knew that I at least wouldn't have to do it alone. Ending six, together forever. Ooh, six of eight, golly. Created in one month, goodness gracious. Melancholy Marionette, those are some those are some impressive games that they make. Aww. <laughs> Safi's story is a fictional one, but the sad truth is that suicide is sometimes the only way out for people struggling with mental health difficulties and discrimination. Mm. According to a study by Cambridge University, autistic women are especially vulnerable 
with them being 13 times more likely to die by suicide than non-autistic women. I could have been one of those women because, like Safi, many years ago, I attempted suicide, and like Safi, I was stopped, not by a mythical being, but by my pet dog at the time. Somehow he knew what I was trying to do, and he sat in my lap and whimpered as though he was begging me not to before snuggling into me. Animals are pretty bloody amazing like that, but humans can be too, even if there are also a lot of total but <laughs> buttholes out there. Yeah. This game hasn't exactly come out the way I'd hoped, because I've been ill lately and I had a lot less time to work on it than I would have liked, but still. I wanted to at least try and tell this story, because when I started writing it, I was feeling deeply suicidal again. Separating myself from Safi meant seeing things from an outside perspective. Really working on this was more like therapy for myself than anything else. But if someone happens to get something out of playing it, then that's a gigantic bonus. This isn't a horror story like almost everything else I've written, because that isn't what I wanted for Safi, or myself. I'm not saying any of this to be pitied. In many ways, I'm one of the lucky ones, because I at least have a dad who cares about me, and supports me as best as he can. I'm saying it because, if you happen to have played this, and were attracted to it because you feel like erasing your existence, please, don't. Life can be really, really brutal, but you never know what's around the corner, and if you end things before you find out, you could miss something special. Please, don't be another statistic. However you may feel about yourself, your life has meaning. You have worth. And whatever society tells you, you have just as much of a right to be here as anyone else. You deserve to live. I know how hard it can be, but try to hang in there. Someday, things will be better. I'm not a religious person, so I won't quote the entire poem, and I know words can be of little comfort. But here are some that brought me to tears the first time I read them. I think of it every time I'm feeling overwhelmed or like I can't keep going. Let everything happen to you, beauty and terror. Just keep going. No feeling is final. Rainer Maria Rilke, go to the limits of your longing. Thanks for playing. Oh, that was beautiful. I have some words, but I will say that at the end, because I want to see if I can, I want to see what the, I might not get all the endings, but I'm going to try to get a good portion of them. What happens if I do try to leave? Shaking away the image of the spirit still in her mind, Safi decided it was best to leave this peculiar place and head back out into the bleak world beyond. Are you sure about that? But it wasn't long before she was discovered by a different entity entirely. Mm hmm? Is it a bear? Ha, huh. so that's where you were hiding. Pretty smart, but not smart enough. Mm hmm? <gasps> uh -huh. What? Blindsided by a blow to the head, Safi's body was flung across the ice covered ground, landing with a nasty crunch. Ah! What? You will suffer for your sins, human! Ah! A fearsome roar shook Safi's very bones as she lay stunned in the snow. Wait, what? Ha! Huh, my sins. And what about all the innocent lives you've taken, beast? Your very existence is a blight on this earth. What? Followed by an anguished cry of defiance. Innocent! You! Who discriminate and destroy every being different to yourselves? Your collective intolerance and ignorance have claimed more lives than I ever will. My endeavors are a mere drop in the ocean compared to all the blood your kind have spilled. I just noticed it's really cool that the 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 text changes depending on who's speaking like for all the characters i think their lives are an acceptable loss for the greater good of us all i don't know who this lady is but i don't think i like her very much 
And that attitude is precisely why you will pay the same price as those who came before you! Wait, you can't do this! <sighs> Perhaps you should have chosen a different path. This road could only have ever led to your demise, demon. Although the Saturn still hadn't seen her, unleashed a blood-curdling scream, accompanied by the gruesome sound of flesh and bone being torn asunder. Well, I guess we don't have to worry about her no more. <laughs> Something warm and sticky sprayed Safi's face, causing her vision to blur a violent shade of crimson. For the first time in forever, Safi feared for her life. Finding the last of her strength, she hauled herself to her feet, sprinting through the snow. Blinded by the blood of the slaughtered stranger, Safi could barely see a thing but she knew she couldn't afford to slow down. Good idea. Start running. A booming command followed behind her as a great lumbering beast stalked each of her desperate strides. Not knowing why, Safi stopped on the spot, but refused to turn and face the blood-soaked creature. There's no need to be afraid. I don't know. You're, you've given me a couple reasons to be afraid, pal. The beast came closer. So close that Safi could smell the coppery tang of its victim choking the very air around it. <laughs> I saw what you did. You're a monster. Snapping out of her trance, Safi ran once again faster this time. Far too nimble for the beast to keep pace with her. Mm -hmm. I said stop! I called out once more with urgency, but its warning reached Safi too late. In the blizzard, oh. she didn't notice the lake ahead of her, running right into its icy embrace. Oh no, Safi! Floundering in the freezing water, Safi sank beneath the surface. Ah. As her heart rate soared, Safi gasped, inhaling an ocean, her entire body shutting down from the shock. Does this flight know no bounds? Poor soul. I had hoped to spare you this. <sighs> ah, that's my nightmare. That's one of my nightmares. Icy water. Ending one, buried beneath. <laughs> or it would have been, but that's not exactly what happened. Yeah, exactly. That that's 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 not what happened. That's ooh, that's just. <laughs> We just did that for the gram. That didn't actually happen. <laughs> I'm actually tearing up a little bit. Because Safi didn't leave after all. Safi chose to stay and wait a while longer for the creature's return. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what she did. <laughs> I thought I'd look less frightening like this. What if I say you do? Those horns and wings are creepy and I don't like them. Chapter 5, Branch B. Freeze. That's very nice that it indicates which branch you're on. You're right about that. Though sending me to sleep every time you're feeling overwhelmed is a lot scarier. <laughs> <laughs> so you think you got me all figured out, do you? <laughs> I suppose it takes one to no one. Hmm. She wasn't sure how to respond, so she shrugged instead wearing a self-deprecating smile. Would it make this easier for you? If I showed you my true nature, let you paint me as the beast who put you in a cage. Hmm. Um. Rubbing the spot on his head where the appendages had been, Snow's expression gradually became more twisted as his eyes clouded over. Oh no. I don't think we want any of that. <sighs> You're so cruel, little Sapphire. Snow knew he shouldn't say another word, but he couldn't help himself. I don't blame you. It's so much easier to hate, isn't it? Hate makes it all hurt a little less. But if that's what you need, Safi, if that's what will save you, then I'll be your monster. No! <laughs> no!
Oh, I was expecting something much worse. <laughs> Walking with purpose towards the cage, Snow mm. flung open the door, marching towards Safi with intent. Wait now. Uh, what if I run? Can I outrun him? Without hesitation, <laughs> Safi sprinted for the open door, half expecting her path to be blocked by the beast, but he allowed her to pass. Mm -mm. <laughs> Wait, did you plan that? Did you want that? Frantically, <laughs> Safi searched the room for her beloved bear, while Snow watched over her with glassy eyes. Looking for this? Huh. <laughs> my bar! Give me back my bar! He knew she'd never leave without it. A sinister smirk <laughs> spread across Snow's lips as he dangled the bear in the air above Safi's head. Careful! How badly do you want it? The real question is, do you have something between your legs because I'm going to kick it to get that bear? Snow taunted her taking hold of each of the bear's arms as he stretched the toy in front of her, stuffing bursting from its seams. <gasps> Stop trying to make me hate you. Stop! Zafi <laughs> screamed at him, but it was no use. Snow tore the bear in two right before her eyes, snarling. Oh! You monster! You're next, Safi. I suggest you run while you still can, if you want to live. Run! <laughs> Swallowing her sadness at the loss of her cherished companion, Safi turned on her heels and did just that. At this point, I'd be throwing fists <laughs> if she that bear was as precious. Through the howling wind and sterile snow. <laughs> he Leaving broke behind her a beast bear. who clutched her bear in both hands, tears of ice forming in his eyes. <laughs> You'll be back someday, Safi. I know it. And when you return, I promise I'll do better. I promise I'll fix you both. <laughs> Had I known back then that his violence was all an elaborate ruse to save me from myself, maybe I would have stayed. Maybe I would have found comfort in his sheltered life with Snow instead of acting on my cowardly compulsion to abandon him. Can I stay with him? I left him there all alone, hurting. A part of me will always wonder if we could have helped each other, that I guess I'll never know. I made my choice, and for better or for worse, I have to try my best to live. For both of us. Ending two tears of ice. Cool. <laughs> cool. Ah, ha, ha. ah, the baby boy is crying. It's okay. It's gonna be all right. Okay. Okay. What if I fight this time? What if I throw hands? What if I fire in her heart? <laughs> Safi summoned the strength to fight throwing a fearsome punch at her attacker's face, yeah. only to find her arm entangled in his icy claws. Dang it! Well, <laughs> it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Seriously? You think you can harm me with your puny mortal punches? <laughs> your weak little sapphire. Weak and pathetic. But I can make you stronger. What doesn't kill you, right? My weak and puny punches are filled with determination. What, what do you mean you can make you can make me stronger? <laughs> Safi struggled in his grasp, growing increasingly panicked as she noticed the shining crystals creeping up her arm, gradually encasing her. <clears throat> you don't need to worry about anything anymore. I promise, this will be entirely painless. Are you freezing my heart? Oh! <gasps> You better not. Within mere seconds of making contact with her skin, Safi's body was surrounded by a sparkling shell of ice. <gasps> That's sick, nasty, and cool, because I like ice powers, but oh no! Oh, you made me do this to you, Safi. You're so stubborn, you, you left me with no other choice. If I can't save you as you are, I'll just have to sculpt you anew. When I'm finished with you, 
You'll be dying to live. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> oh, no. Did you dip into Yandere mode? <laughs> It would take time to engineer her transformation, but he was willing to spend eternity, if that's what was required. This looks sick! Ah! Ice powers and plant powers are my favorite thing. This looks sick! Ah, this looks so pretty! But gosh darn it, she's in an ice coffin now! Ah! And so Snow kept Safi, Glacial, a prized sculpture, amongst the frozen petals of a secret garden, sheltered from the sorrows of the world. He was determined not to let her feelings leave her undefined, to rid her of the plight of self-affliction. Well, shoot. I suppose a stronger person might have protested, but I've always been weak. No! Besides, I'd let others shape me all my life. At least Snow understood me on some level. If he could truly change me with his chilling hands, I would welcome the opportunity to emerge reborn, cleansed of everything about myself that I despised. Maybe metamorphosis was always the answer. I couldn't cope in the vessel I was born with. With dying out of the question, evolution was the only option left for me. Hmm. Ending three, dying to live. Hmm. I'd call it evolution, but hmm. pretty. Ah. Okay. Okay. Okay, buddy. What if I stay still? She could have run from like... him or tried to fight, but instead Safi chose to stand completely still, showing no fear. Unrelenting, Snow forced her back to the wall, pinning her against it with his sheer stature. As he towered over Safi, she refused to look away, staring straight into his eyes. Tell me one thing, little Sapphire. Do you honestly want to die? Uh... Now I'm gonna say yes, which isn't true at all, but only because I want the endings. I do. I do not. Safi does not. I will not allow you, Safi. With whatever strength I have, I will not let you down. But I must do this for the endings, because I want to see what happens. Yeah. Safi spoke the words softly, as though making her wedding vows. Aww. <sighs> Then it's true. Some people can't be saved. I never thought I'd meet someone else like me. You really are something special, Safi. But because of that... Mm. I'm afraid I can't quite let you go. Oh no! Standing statuesque beneath the beast, Safi remained unafraid despite the chill of his breath on her neck. Death isn't the end, Safi. Mother Nature is as cruel as she is kind. Whatever we do to try and escape this wretched existence will always remain. One way or another. Mm. If I can't save your soul, we might as well stay trapped together. What did you have in mind? What do you mean? <clears throat> I'll show you. Whispering gently. Snow's pale lips briefly grazed Safi's ear before his icy fingers seized her neck, <gasps> squeezing softly on her throat. Oh no! Safi felt no pain, no desire to struggle in his grasp. She only hoped that he could somehow end her. Staring into Safi's eyes for a moment, Snow's piercing gaze penetrated every inch of her, as though searching for any hint of uncertainty. It was nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. The second he knew she was sure, Snow inched closer to Safi's lips, hovering in hesitation as his mind plagued him with images of his own demise many decades ago. Are you gonna turn me into a cool snow thing? Do it. And then I'm going to regret it for all eternity? Safi encouraged him tenderly, still utterly fearless of whatever fate awaited her at the hands of the beast.
Within seconds, the soul she had come to know vanished, replaced by an entity as pale as the snow outside. Did she turn into a core Yuki Ona? Ah! His transformation was so mesmerizingly blinding that Safi's eyes were forcibly screwed shut. Oh, oh wait, is that him? Did he turn into a super cool Yuki Ona? Wasting no more time, Snow did as commanded, his lips crashing into hers as he tightened his grip on her throat. She was so soft and she tasted of cinnamon spice from the food he'd been bringing her. Ooh. She didn't deserve this, but then neither did he. Wait, what? Snow uh. kissed Safi as though his very life depended on it. Little did she know between uh. the muffled moans they shared, he was sucking out her soul, <gasps> drop by deadly drop. <gasps> he had no desire to devour her light, but he lacked the discipline to deny her the gift he'd been given, and he was so, so tired of living alone. When he sensed that Safi's fire was extinguished, Snow pulled away, licking the last of her soul from his lips. How do you feel? Uh, I don't know. I'm scared. Snow, what have you done to me? Oh no, she is speaking in a soulless manner. Like a house that wasn't home, Safi felt hollow and yet somehow it hurt. Shh, shh. It's okay. We're almost done. There's just one more step, and then you won't feel a thing. Or was that the blizzard lady? Snow moved in once more. Only this time he sealed Safi's lips with a much more sorrowful kiss. A mere doll in his arms, Safi's body sagged and sank, forcing Snow to take all of her weight. Instead of draining her this time, Snow inhaled deeply before blowing all the breath in his body into her, glistening tears cascading down his cheeks. Mm. Safi lacked the words to describe the sensation. It was as though everything inside her was freezing all at once. Her internal organs, her blood, everything was turning to ice. In a matter of seconds, she was completely numb. Standing back to admire his handiwork, Snow wiped away the tears that threatened to freeze on the surface of his skin. How about now? Aww. He questioned Safi once again, concerned. He knew how it should feel, but he'd never attempted to turn someone before her. It's incredible. I don't feel anything. Nothing at all. Oh! I never thought I'd be so sad and full of tears to see someone turn into a cool ice demon. Then consider yourself cured. For now, at least. Does she get a sick hoodie like yours? But how is this possible? Did I die? What did you do? I'm afraid you're still very much alive. Just... in a different way from what you're used to. I shared my curse with you, Safi. Your heart is like mine now, made of ice. Given time or an encounter with the right soul, it'll thaw. But for now, you're free of all those awful feelings that bound you and led you here to me. Finally free. Yeah. You'll probably need some time to adjust, but you should know there's a price to pay for being this way. We have to fight the Blight now. Here's your sword. Uh, don't worry about that for now, though. I'll teach you everything you need to know once you've had a chance to rest. Hey, Snow. Thank you. But please don't mention it. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said my reasons for turning you were entirely altruistic. The truth is, I'm tired. <laughs> I don't want to keep doing this on my own. With you by my side, everything will be so much easier. S so I guess... I guess I should be thanking you. I never imagined in my wildest dreams I'd ever meet someone so 
similar to myself. It's like staring in a mirror. We... We were meant for each other, Sati. Aww, is this good? Is this cute? Uh... At last, I won't have to spend this eternity alone anymore. Aww. And so the pair of them remained together, united by their shared gift, or curse, depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Every morning they would stand side by side in silence, watching the sun rise over the snow-covered canopy to greet the dawn of a new day. After that, I would never quite feel at home in my body again. It was almost as though someone had rummaged around inside me while I was absent, and then locked me out of the only home I'd ever known. Hmm. To be a stranger in your own skin is an odd sensation. I thought I knew numbness before, but this was something else. Something far more insidious. I was unshackled from everything that made me, me. It should have been horrifying, but I didn't mourn the passing of my former self. I didn't know how. And so I simply embraced the emptiness that was so graciously gifted to me. That sounds a lot like embracing the void. And I don't know if I like that. I don't know how to feel about this. Ending four, two of a kind. Oh well, at least they're not alone. That's good. Okay. So, saying yes turns me into a cool ice demon. What if I say no and be a bit more honest? Like, no, no, I really don't want to die, actually. It's- Of course it's I a, don't. It's a whole- Does thing. anyone really want to die? I dream of death out of desperation because living is too fucking painful. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do. I'm oh. sorry you feel that way, Safi. I wish I could heal that hurt, but I'm not strong enough. Souls like yours will always suffer while the world is the way it is. <sighs> I've spent a lifetime trying my best to save those who find themselves lost in her blizzard. But it's not enough. Passively protecting those in danger isn't going to shift the state of things. I see that now. If I'm going to make a real difference, I need to leave this place and become a therapist. If I'm going to change the world, I'll need to spill much more blood. What? Wait, what? Wait, what? No, no. The blight won't end unless I face it head on. No more hiding out here in the wilderness. I won't have your life restricted to the shadows like mine. You deserve to taste the sun on your skin. Wait, whose blood are we spilling here? Hold on a second. Sighing <sighs> heavily, Snow moved to cradle Safi in his cold arms, mm. his lips grazing her forehead. Oh, now, now, can we get back to whose blood you spill and... Allow me to at least do this for you. Safi shivered at his touch and nodded silently, giving him permission to proceed. I'm going to send you to sleep. When you wake, this world will be a better place for both of us. I'll make sure of it. Snow traced his finger along Safi's cheek before wrapping her up in his freezing embrace, forcing her into a dreamless sleep. Mm. I'll see you on the other side, Safi. Mm. When the world is reborn in blood, <laughs> I'll carve out a place for you, no matter the cost. All you have to do is wait for me. Snow? 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 Let's hold on a second here. And so, wait is exactly what I did. Pretty. It was all I could do. When I eventually awoke, I barely recognized the reality that greeted me. Snow? What did you do? I never asked anyone to make allowances for me, let alone go out of their way to adapt. I didn't feel as though I deserved the effort. I definitely didn't deserve this. When I realized the extent of Snow's devotion, I wasn't sure whether I should feel flattered or furious. Did you freeze the whole world? I suppose it didn't really matter. The truth, though, 
is that I was petrified. He tried to shield me from the sight, but I knew the blood-stained snow and stacks of bodies marked the borders of his icy palace while the interior remained pristine. Mm -mm. Did he just go... <laughs> Did he just go outside and go... Let it go, let it go, can't hold it back anymore. And just freeze all of his existence. <clears throat> what little remained was entirely his, including me. Cool. I had traded one prison for another, a lonely queen on a tainted throne at the end of the world. Very pretty, but gosh Ending five. darn it. Permafrost princess. Cool. That's so cool. Ah, that's so pretty and cool. I love ice-themed things. Except maybe ice levels in video games, but ah, that's so cool. Pun intended. You know, so were her hands, like, bound? I couldn't really tell, but ah, that's so cool! Ah! Uh, last time I said, uh, the lady Blizzard sounds incredible, but, uh, what, what, what do you mean? You don't, you don't think she's incredible? I'm guessing you disagree with her? It's I mean, not she... that I think she's wrong. Heck, she's wiser than me. But the blight won't end unless we go out and face it head on. Yeah, you- I forgot. You- you don't like that she did that thing to you. And I- I hate being trapped here, all by myself. The blizzard, she- She did what she did, and then she just left. Hmm. Sure, she taught me how to fight, how to help, but it's not enough. You're the first person I've encountered in eons who came here to kill themselves instead of me. I'm sick of being hunted for who I am. Before I met her, people saw me as a freak. She made sure that's all I'll ever be. Mm -mm. Okay, so dude comes at me with the knife. I resisted because, you know, he thought that I thought that he was going to use that knife to kill me. But he must have known. I'd, and I, I'm, just, I'm just rambling here. Uh, I didn't choose to let snow come. Whether it was by sense or something else entirely, somehow Safi knew she needn't be scared of him. Aww. When Snow strode forward, he tentatively pushed open the door. It was only then that Safi noticed it had been unlocked all along. <laughs> she was never his prisoner. She'd stayed because she'd assumed she had no choice, so used to being helpless that it didn't even occur to her to try the handle. Mm. The realization that she'd essentially caged herself here, just as she had at home, hit her like a ton of bricks. And at the same time, Snow flung his arms around her, holding her tightly. Aww. I know how it feels to have emotions so strong you can scarcely contain them. It is both a curse and a gift. But believe me when I say this, you're not broken, no matter how much you may think that. So don't you ever let anyone try to fix you. In an attempt to spare Safi from the sight, Snow swiftly cut into his own hand with the knife behind her back, <laughs> smearing some of his blood into the eyes of her beloved bear before squeezing her even tighter. Aww. Your brain is wired differently. You can't change that. You can try as hard as you like, but... You are who you are. Whether or not the people around you are able to accept that is their problem, not yours. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I know it's scary, but if you close yourself off to the world because of them, you'll never experience anything. Comforted by his embrace, Safi hugged him back, holding on as though her life depended on it. Aww. You deserve to be happy. Neither of the pair wanted to be the first to break their connection. 
but it was Snow who reluctantly backed away first, holding out her bear with a grin of satisfaction on his lips. Y you repaired him! Safi noticed Snow's handiwork almost immediately, jumping up and down on the spot in excitement. Aww. I wanted him to be whole again. I couldn't possibly let you leave with him the way he was, when I know how important he is to you. <laughs> it's incredible. He looks brand new. How'd you do that? Do you have like a sewing kit out here? <laughs> and I even added a little extra magic. Just for you. What's this <laughs> blood on his face? <laughs> huh? If you're ever in need of a friend, someone to talk to, just give Snow here a squeeze, and it'll just be like I'm in the room with you. <laughs> Aww. R really? Safi gasped, unsure whether to be impressed or alarmed. <laughs> yep. I put a small part of me inside him, so I can watch over you. Wherever you go, I'll always be by your side, and if anyone, ever, tries to hurt you, I'll ensure they won't make the same mistake twice. Oh, <laughs> literally have a killer teddy bear now. Um, you're not gonna hurt anyone, right? Oh no, I'm not gonna hurt them, I'm just going to murder them. I'm afraid I can't make any promises <laughs> there. <laughs> Snow. <laughs> Okay, okay, I'm only kidding. <laughs> Are ya? Seriously, though, it's my job to protect you. You're special, Sappy. I need you to know that. I didn't save you so you could go back to your old life and rot away. I don't think not leaving is a good idea. I think you should say I understand and move on with your life. That seems like the best thing to do. So I'm going to start with I'm not leaving. Who said anything about going back? I, I thought that's what you wanted. I just wanted to get out of this cage. No, silly. I want to stay here with you. Hmm. You do? Of course. Whatever this blight is, I'm not going to let you face it on your own. We're in this together from now on. Aww. It's gearing up to be a, a 90s movie. Just depressed teen teams up with a depressed magical being to fight the, the, the nothing and then ride dragons and then save the childlike empress. Clutching her reborn bear resolutely, Safi resembled a much younger version of herself. Her shattered faith restored. Aww. Are you sure? This life isn't an easy one, Safi. I'm sure. I don't care if it's difficult, as long as I get to stay with you. At least that's a life worth living. Oh, that's actually pretty cute. Stunned to silence by her sincerity, Snow felt his heart thaw a little more. Oh. But I'm... a beast, Safi. I'm scared that once you see what I've become, you'll want to leave. Was that you that ripped that lady apart? <laughs> Then why don't you show me now, and I'll prove to you that you've got absolutely nothing to be afraid of. You say that now, but you haven't seen me with blood on my claws and flesh in my teeth. Who knows? The blizzard's Maybe gift. That. It, it turned me into a monster. Mm. I don't care. I like you for you. So what if you get a little bloody battling the blight? You stopped me from throwing my life away and mended my bear. The snow I know gave me hope when I had none. Do you honestly think I'd abandon you after that? I'm not going anywhere, and there's nothing you could do to frighten me away. I just want you to be yourself. Releasing a sigh of defeat, Snow bowed his head in acceptance. How could he possibly deny her wish? Hmm. As he took a step back, gentle winds surrounded Snow, encasing him in an icy glow. Before bursting to reveal a magnificent creature, unlike anything Safi had seen before. Cool! Cool! 
cool. He's still fuzzy. Ah, oh, still cute. Would pet. Would give head scratches. I don't know if you would think that's offensive. She didn't need words to say how she felt, and so she set down her bear to hold Snow's head in both hands, mm. rubbing his muzzle affectionately as she buried her face in his comforting fur. Oh, he's like a snow dragon fox. Snow allowed her to stay there for a few minutes, growling softly with approval, before suddenly flipping her up onto his back. <laughs> hey, the never ending story reference I just said will actually happen. With a flick of his heels, Snow galloped out into the glistening white world, Safi atop him. And the pair of them disappeared beyond the blizzard. I knew a storm was coming, but for now, just for a little while, I would allow myself to stop worrying about the world and concentrate on what mattered most. Enjoying the precious time snow stole back from fate for me. Whatever trials the blight may bring, we'll face them head on, together. Ending 7. Beyond the Blizzard. Cool. That's a cool ending. I like that ending. <laughs> okay, and I believe this is the last ending. Woohoo! Can I just profusely thank Melancholy Marionette for adding a walkthrough and such a well-written and detailed walkthrough. Thank you so much for adding that. That is immensely helpful to Let's Players like me. Because <laughs> I can't keep track of the endings I already got. So, the last ending is saying, I understand. While this ending is super cool and in my mind will be the canon ending, this one is ending eight. I know. And I swear, if I'm ever feeling overwhelmed or alone, I'll give Little Snow here a squeeze. The pair stood together in awkward silence, neither one of them sure how to proceed. These past months had been strange for them both. A part of them didn't want to let the other go. Oh. Hey, Snow. It was Safi who broke the silence. Huh? You deserve to be happy too, you know. She smiled at him in the same way that had melted his heart little by little during their time together. And for a moment, he contemplated forcing her to stay. Yeah, you should go, Safi. Please, before I end up doing something I'll regret. Mm. <sighs> you mean like turning me to ice or freezing and destroying the entire world for me? Was some something like that? As hard as it was for Snow to let her go, he knew deep down he couldn't keep her there. But he could at least take comfort in the knowledge that she would always have a part of him with her, wherever she went. Mm. In a sense, she could never truly leave him. <laughs> Safi didn't see it, but when she swallowed her sadness at their parting and stepped out into the snow, the eyes of her bear glimmered with an icy glow. Oh. Ah, precious. Little Sapphire, you don't need to worry about anything anymore. I promise, I'll watch over you. And I promise, I will never, ever let you go. Mm. <laughs> oh no! Oh. From that day forward, Snow watched her from afar, waiting for the day she would finally call on him to comfort her. He knew she needed space, so he was careful not to intrude. The last thing he wanted was to deceive her. Betrayal would be bitter, and so he had no choice but to conceal his half-truth. He didn't need Safi's permission to take advantage of the conduit he created for her. I figured. Oblivious to his actions, Snow shadowed Safi each and every day, subtly disposing of everyone who dared to stand in the way of her happiness. What? No matter the cost, he would secure her a future where she could smile. Wait, what? Oh no! Is this the Andre ending? Ending 8, Guardian Angel. Oh no! <laughs> 
Oh dear! Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. Oh my gosh, Melancholy Marionette is... I always look forward to playing their games. There is just so much love and just heart put into their games and I love just experiencing them and then feeling that little tinge in my heart knowing that, that this came from a person that really... I don't know, I'm bad with words. That's why I like playing these games, because you see a part of the developer in some games. And I know that this game dealt with some heavy themes that a lot of people like to censor or not talk about, but depression and suicide and autism and mental health are things that I personally think should not be censored and should be talked about more. Because I went through that. You may think that, oh, she calls herself Espoir because it's neat and French, but there's actually a long journey that brought me to where I am, and most of that journey was really bad. I, I laugh about it now, but it was probably the worst points in my life, the lowest points of my life. And maybe someday I'll make a video about why I named myself Espoir de Vide and touch on a little bit of the things that brought me here. But I really want to say that you aren't alone. You really, really aren't. There are so many people that feel the way that you do. And it, it's really hard to reach out to people. It's Even I have trouble reaching out to people. I'm still healing, but I notice that I am healing. And I see other people healing, and it is possible for things to get better, but they're not always going to be perfect. It's not always going to be great, but it's not going to be not great forever. I hope what I'm trying to say isn't just rambling. This is all off the top of the dome, all unscripted. <laughs> just opening up the door and seeing what comes out. But if you take anything away from my ramblings, suicide is never the answer. It's only a permanent solution to a temporary problem. This feeling is not forever. That's what I tell myself when the void, and no, I, I don't mean Kara that I dress up as, I mean the void that I call my own depression. When that starts to like bubble up and take over you and make you feel hopeless, that feeling will go away. It will go away, I promise you. It'll take some time. It might not take a day, it might take weeks. And as for people treating you like a monster, treating you like you're nothing, treating you like you don't matter, they, they don't matter. What matters is your happiness. You were put on this earth to feel happy. And it's hard to get that, but it is there. Take note of the moments where you are happy. There are times when you will laugh, there's a lot of times where you're gonna cry, but crying is super healthy. But taking your own life is not the answer. There is help. There is love for you. There's something. I don't know exactly what it is, but this world isn't as impossible as it may seem. Like, yeah, we're, we're not gonna get snow queens, we're not gonna get fuzzy dragons, but I'm a YouTuber with over 30,000 subscribers. How did this happen? I just chose to keep going. I just chose to keep walking and to see where it led me. So if you've made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. <laughs> and as always, there will be a link in the description so you can play this game for yourself or play any of the other amazing games that Melancholy Marionette has made. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Take care of yourself. Have a great night, that is, get some sleep, get proper sleep, and remember, there is always hope.